It is great if you can get one of these beautiful fish in the juvenile stage. They are so ornate when they are young, and they do well in tank life. Be aware that chevron tangs will lose their juvenile colors as they grow into adults and become much larger. As an adult, it is still a nice looking fish, as well as a good algae eater. The distribution of this fish extends from Hawaii southeastward to eastern Polynesia, southward to central Polynesia, westward to the Marianas Islands, and doubtless to many other adjoining areas. The adults inhabit the shallower oxygen-enriched waters close to the surf zone of the reef where rocks and crevices are found, often collecting in schools. The juveniles prefer the deeper, finger coral-inhabited waters and live singly. The juvenile stage of the chevron tang is very colorful with deep purple, orange, and red marking. In captivity, the chevron tang seems to retain its juvenile colors for quite a while longer than it seems to in the wild. There are several cases where the chevron retained its juvenile colors for more than three years, whereas in the wild, the chevron seems to shift to its adult colors after a year. Once in the adult stage, the red and purple colors fade and the coloring becomes dark brown, almost black, with the sides of the body and head marked by many fine horizontal, yellowish-gray lines. Because the adult stage of the chevron tang is similar in appearance to that of a coal, yellow eye surgeonfish tang, it is sometimes referred to as the Hawaiian black coal. The differences are that it does not have the yellow ring around the eye, the body is darker in color, and its pectoral fins turn a dark brown color, where the coal's pectoral fins are almost transparent. This is not an overly aggressive fish, so it may get picked on by more aggressive surgeonfish. It will usually get along well with other tank inhabitants, with the exception of its own kind, and it rarely bothers immobile invertebrates. Its diet makes it a great complementary companion for other peaceful surgeonfish such as the yellow tang or the Pacific sailfin tang, though you need to keep an eye on compatibility. In the wild, a cleaner wrasse would normally keep a tang parasite free. Alternatively, you can add neon gobies or cleaner shrimp to your home tank to help them remove parasites that might crop up. The minimum aquarium size suggested for this fish is at least 135 gallons. It is a big swimmer and needs a lot of space. Being among the smallest and least active of the surgeon fish, you would think a smaller aquarium would suit it, but it needs a lot of space for algae to grow and for them to harvest on their own. They need plenty of naturally grown algae and accumulated detritus. To meet their dietary needs they will need a large aquarium with lots of live rock. They will benefit even more with the inclusion of live sand. They use their teeth to lift and sift through various types of rocks, sand, and other surfaces and use their mouths to vacuum up the algae. In the aquarium, you will often see little lip marks on the glass where algae used to be. They are susceptible to bacteria resulting from organic buildup which deteriorates water quality. They will need vigorous filtration, protein skimming, and regular small water changes. Although this fish is a herbivore in the wild, but its main diet consisted of marine microalgae growth, you can also feed it shrimp and other meat foods in captivity. The majority of their intake will be vegetable matter. The chevron tang is excellent for keeping the brown diatom algae and green hair algae in check in your aquarium. This fish is sometimes called a bristle-tooth tang due to its nature of feeding. They use bristle-like teeth to eat detritus which contains minute algae rather than the filamentous algae eaten by other tangs. The C. tenochitis species, referred to as both the bristle-tooth or comb-tooth tangs, have several rows of small flexible comb-like teeth, up to 30 teeth, along with a protrusive pouting mouth. Provide lots of marine algae, prepared frozen formulas containing algae or spirulina, frozen brine and mycid shrimp, and flake foods. Use a vegetable clip to adhere Japanese nori seaweed to the aquarium glass. Feed three times a day in smaller amounts instead of a large quantity once a day. As continuous grazers, they will benefit from this. This will also keep the water quality better over a longer period of time. 